We all know that Knox County is a great place to live, work, and to raise a family. During my campaign, I identified seven issues that will help us become even better. A commitment to keeping taxes low, continuing to attract new jobs to our area, a renewed focus on the quality of education, infrastructure, working to create safer communities, full transparency, and a fresh outlook on limited government. These issues are all important and interrelated, but the number one priority of my administration is economic development. It's a fancy way of saying that we must maintain and enhance an environment which is attractive to the private sector and conducive to providing good jobs to the people of Knox County. Today I'm going to present a brief progress report on these seven issues and to provide a forecast of how this year's budget addresses them. As I've said many times, I am absolutely committed to keeping taxes low. Governments do not ask their citizens for money. They demand their citizens pay taxes. And the people actually have very little say in how that money is spent. Unlike the private sector, governments do not specialize in competition and consumer choice. So I believe that we have a moral imperative to keep taxes as low as we can and to spend that money effectively and in a way, hopefully, that benefits as many people as we can. At the same time, I realize that to provide the services expected of us, we must be realistic when looking at tax rates, revenue, and spending. Fortunately, with a growing tax base and a vibrant economy, Knox County is in a good financial place. I am proud to propose a budget which is fiscally responsible, meets the needs of the county both now and in the future, and does not include a tax increase. Overall, yes, thank you. It's, it's okay to clap on the good stuff, thank you. <laughs> Overall, this year's budget has grown by $34,079,243, a 4.16% increase over last year. Most of that increase is due to pay raises, which I will get into a bit more later. We're in the process of implementing a voluntary workforce reduction plan for eligible employees in hopes of lowering our overall personnel costs going forward, however. We have been able to make some smart cuts that will not impact the essential services government provides. Specifically, I want to recognize our Parks and Recreation Department and our uh, IT department, our Information Technology Department, for the their great work in streamlining their budgets. Knox County has been fortunate to experience an expanding tax base and organic revenue growth. But if we want to keep taxes low, and I know all of us do, it is vital that we continue to be an attractive place to do business. Not only does this benefit the county's bottom line, but the single most important thing we can do for our citizens and for our children is to ensure economic opportunity. With record low unemployment across the state, our challenge is not only retaining and attracting new jobs, but ensuring that these jobs are high quality, high paying jobs. The key to success is our region's unique assets, specifically in the high tech and research and development sectors of the economy. I look forward to working with new leadership at the Knoxville Chamber, the University of Tennessee, and TVA, as well as the proven leadership at the Farragut West Knox Chamber of Commerce, the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and our regional governments and partners to promote Knox County and East Tennessee as a force in the global economy. In addition, we must work to better align our education system with the private sector to promote the trades and career and technical education pathways to make sure that our workforce has the tools to take advantage of the tremendous opportunities currently available in the skilled trades. Our goal should be to make Knox County the workforce development center of East Tennessee. You see, we can talk all day about jobs, but if we don't have the people to fill those jobs, nothing will ever materialize. An excellent workforce pipeline is key to any area's economic success. And the key to an excellent workforce pipeline is excellent schools. 
Knox County Schools, as we can see, are home to incredible faculty, staff, and students. This year, we are proposing a $22,122,000 increase to the General Purpose School Fund. It gets better. <laughs> this increase includes enough funding to make a significant investment in our teachers. I am extremely pleased that our proposed budget provides enough funding for a 3.5% raise for certified teachers and classified employees at the Knox County Schools. With this proposal, Knox County taxpayers are providing our schools with the largest year-over-year -year increase in our county's history. Unfortunately, the state's antiquated funding formula, the Basic Education Program, or BEP, is still an impediment to overall school funding here in Knox County. Uh, under the BEP, Knox County subsidizes other counties around the state to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. That's not right. Certainly we want to be good neighbors, but my responsibility is to Knox County first, and I will do everything in my power to make sure that Knox County is treated fairly. I am committed to... <laughs> I am committed to working with Governor Lee and our delegation to overhaul the BEP and ensure Knox County schools receive the state funding we are due. In this budget, we are also addressing some school capital needs which have been deferred for far too long. We are happy to be able to fund building expansions at Sturkey and Bricky McLeod Elementary Schools and set aside funds to acquire property for a new elementary school in Northwest Knox County. We are also proposing funding for a new building at Adrian Burnett. And a new elementary school in the Lawnsdale community. This budget calls for an $800,000 contribution from the Knox County General Fund as an initial down payment for Lawnsdale School. I look forward to working with Superintendent Thomas and the Board of Education to provide additional funding for that project in the coming years. The most important investment we can make when it comes to education is, of course, our students. Across the nation, we face a crisis in early childhood literacy. Reading on grade level in the third grade is a benchmark for success, both in school and in life. In third grade, students are no longer just learning to read. They are reading to learn. Across Tennessee, only about a third of all third grade students read on grade level. In Knox County, we're doing something about it. Superintendent Thomas and other leaders from Knox County Schools recently approached my office with an exciting new literacy program. This budget provides $750,000 for elements that include, among other things, providing focused literacy training to all first and second year pre-K to fifth grade teachers through the year-long reading course, best reading practices demonstration classrooms, stipends for librarians to provide additional access to school libraries, promoting Knox County public library cards, and building a systemic way to communicate information about our Read City USA initiative. I hope that many of you are already aware of the Read City USA initiative my office recently launched. The goal of this initiative is to get Knox Countyans excited about reading and specifically improve outcomes for children five years old and younger and in our most vulnerable populations. We want Knox County to be known as the best read community in America. We want Knox County to be known as Reed City USA. You can do your part by going to ReedCityUSA.com and taking one of the pledges to promote literacy and be on the lookout for some big news coming from Reed City USA in the very near future. Switching to infrastructure, this year's 
uh, budget includes an increase to our road paving budget of $1 million, which is a 25% increase over last year. With the rising cost of asphalt, we must figure out ways to make our money go as far as it can. Jim Snowden, head of engineering and public works, is in the process of obtaining a pavement management system that will evaluate all 2,200 miles of Knox County roadways to objectively determine their condition on a continual basis. This will allow engineering and public works to make better decisions about overall road maintenance and upkeep, thereby saving us money and extending the life of our roads. One of the most important investments our community can make is in public safety. Of course, the Knox County Sheriff's Office is the front line for us in this area. They're fighting the substance misuse epidemic, human trafficking, and a host of other issues. These people put their lines, their lives, on the line for us every day. And I appreciate them, as I'm sure everybody else in this room does. My office has worked with Sheriff Spangler to provide his officers with an approximately 6% pay increase in the fiscal year 2020. I, I believe this is long overdue. Battling the substance misuse epidemic is a priority of my administration. Last fall, Mayor O'Hara and I, thank you again for, for doing that with me, hosted a mayor summit to bring together government officials, nonprofit organizations, and members of the private sector to have a frank discussion about this issue, identify gaps in services, and begin formulating a master plan as to how our community and uh, how our community can and should respond to this crisis. We've made a lot of progress. The Knox County Health Department has created a substance misuse response coordinator position in support of All for Knox, which is a joint city and county effort to address the substance misuse epidemic. The Metro Drug Coalition continues its frontline work, and the faith-based community has stepped up and is engaged. And um, I would like all the pastors who are working with us on this issue through the Knox County Church Network, could you please stand so we could recognize you? <laughs> Folks, I've said time and again, this is an issue the government cannot solve alone. It will take all of us, the entire community, and I'm extremely thankful that so many good people are answering the call. Governments are in the trust business. Without public confidence, a government cannot operate effectively to meet public needs. So I believe it is imperative to maintain open, honest communication between government and its citizens. Since taking office, there are several ways I have worked to be accessible to the community and open about what my office is doing every day. Every week, I host a community lunch at a local restaurant. We have dubbed these eat and greets. We, we aim to visit establishments in every corner of the county. To date, we have visited 23 locations and have had a lot of great meals. For me, that means a lot of double cheeseburgers and fries. <laughs> Anyone can stop by to say hello. A number of times, folks have brought import, important issues to my attention. Today, I will be hosting an eat and greet at Perros of Powell, which is right off of I-75 and Emory Road. I'll be there at 11.30 a.m. Please join me if you're able. I also host constituent meetings about once a month, usually at a library or senior center. At these, I talk with folks one-on-one -on -one about whatever they want. It's a great way for my constituent service team, folks in the community, and me to problem solve real time and face to face. And every Friday, I deliver a weekly update to discuss what my office is working on, where we've been that week, and what's planned for the upcoming week. We share that video on Facebook, Twitter, and the Knox County Government website. I put a lot of emphasis on social media, not because it's the in thing, but social media helps the community stay abreast of what's happening in local government and provides them another avenue to communicate with us about it. And finally, I'm committed to a fresh outlook on limited government. 
As we can clearly see with the substance misuse epidemic, government may not always have the answers, but we can certainly help facilitate the conversation. I think that is one of the most important roles of the mayor's office. Like any community, there are a lot of issues that we need to address, but government can't do it alone, nor should we try. It takes the entire community. Yesterday, I stopped at a Weigel's right down the road from here as I was walking past their stock room. I noticed a man sitting in the stock room. Obviously, he didn't belong there. He was probably homeless. So I told the cashier, you do realize there's a dude sitting in your storeroom, right? And she said, yes, we just gave him breakfast and are letting him rest. He comes in about every day and we do our best to take care of him. That's our community. It's the simple acts of kindness, compassion, and brotherly love that we rarely hear about, but happen every day. We don't need government micromanaging our lives and telling us what we should do because politicians think it's the right thing. We already know. We already know what the right thing is, and given the opportunity, we generally do it. I am committed to working with the private sector, the faith-based community, and our local nonprofit organizations to collaborate on all the challenges that we currently face and the challenges that will inevitably come up. Together, all of us can make this wonderful place we call home even better. And we can make it better. This past Saturday, I was bestowed with one of the greatest honors of my life. Our local Veterans of Foreign Wars, it's post 1733, is building a Veterans Memorial Wall at their location on 4th Avenue. They asked me to lay the first brick in honor of my dad, a 21-year military veteran himself. Like so many other vets, my dad isn't famous. He's not written about in history books. He was a master sergeant. He wasn't a general. In the overall scheme of things, he just he isn't that important. But as I told the crowd that day, where would we be without my dad and people like him? Throughout our history, people like my father have believed that the ideals upon which this country rests are so important that they were willing to put themselves in harm's way to protect and preserve them. Freedom, liberty, the American dream, these are not just cliches. They have implications in the real world. Like all of you, I am a product of the American dream. All human beings have dreams and aspirations and inspirations. But America is one of the few places that anyone, anyone can make those dreams, aspirations, and inspirations reality. We ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor, a teacher, a firefighter, an artist, a policeman, a scientist, a minister, a parent. In America, if you have the ability, you can do it. As for me, I always wanted to be a professional athlete ever since I was a little kid. Growing up in rural Northeast Missouri, I wanted to play baseball for the St. Louis Cardinals. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Bud's from Corrington, but he likes the Cardinals too. <laughs> There's this one problem. I was a terrible baseball player. I was much better at basketball. Then I found I was really good at football, good enough that it looked like an NFL career was in the cards. A serious knee injury dashed those hopes. I signed with the Chicago Bears as an undrafted free agent, but was released after one day because of my knee. I was devastated. It was, it was the biggest disappointment of my life. But even though I had failed, and failed and failed. I kept trying. I kept discovering opportunities. 
I kept creating opportunities, and I finally found success in, of all things, professional wrestling. As I look out here today, I see so many folks who I respect, folks who have done tremendous things in their personal and professional lives. All of your stories are unique, but they share a common theme. They all began with the dream and aspiration and inspiration. So I ask you, my community, Knox County, what is our dream? What is our aspiration? What is our inspiration? What do we want to be when we grow up? What do we want to be moving forward? A while back, I asked a business leader from North Carolina what his impression of Knox County was. He told me that when people thought of us, they thought of two things, UT football and the World's Fair. The World's Fair was in 1982. And, you know, I'm as big a volunteer football fan as anyone out there, and I hope and pray that Coach Pruitt turns it around. But we really haven't had a whole lot to brag about in almost two decades. We are so much more than just those two things. We have assets in our region that other areas would give anything for. The world's foremost research laboratory is in our backyard. When it comes to geographical location, ours is about as good as it gets. Nearly one half of the nation's population lives within a one day drive of Knox County. We are home to a major university as well as the state's largest community college. We are the headquarters of the region's most important economic development organization. Major corporations, innovative, vibrant small businesses, lots of entertainment and recreation, good restaurants and food, a moderate climate, the list goes on and on. We have it all. <laughs> and everything is good here. We're doing good, but good is the enemy of great, and we can be truly great. We can be a place that the rest of the nation looks to with envy, a place that gets phone calls from around the country asking us, how did you do it? How did you all do it? Because that's what I do. That's the question. I ask leaders from other communities who oversaw the transition, transformation of their community from good to great. And when we talk about Knox County, they all say the same thing. Man, I am, I'm jealous of you. You have so much potential in Knox County. It's just a matter of seizing it. I want to be on the other end of that phone call. I want them to ask me, them to ask all of you, how did you all do it? The answer is simple, we'll say. We made a decision. Good wasn't good enough. We wanted to be great. And we found ways to make it happen. We had a dream, an aspiration, an inspiration, and we made it reality. President Reagan famously depicted America as the shining city on a hill, an example to the rest of the world of greatness. Why can't Knox County be that shining city within America? Imagine an economy that stresses innovation, churns out opportunity, and is a player in the rapidly changing global economy. An education system that provides its students with the tools they need to be successful in whatever avenue they choose, whether it's liberal arts, STEAM education, or the trades. And most importantly, a community that comes together not only to confront issues, but to make the possible real. 
We can be. We can be that community. We will be that community if we truly want to be that community. <laughs> to the elected officials who are here today, everything we do should take us one step closer to being the best place that we can be. That is one of the goals of this budget. To the private citizens here, I am ever cognizant that you have entrusted me with your money and that you expect Knox County to spend it as effectively as possible and to spend as little of it as possible. That is the other goal of this budget. Thanks to the hard work of our tremendous employees across all departments, especially our finance department, I believe that we have succeeded on both counts. I look forward to your approval. Thank you all very much. Thank you.